This is Math 141, and we are doing section 11.4 right now. And we're going to do what's uh, what's called shifted conics. These things that we've been sketching are conics, conic sections. They're, if you split coin uh, a cone in different ways, you get all these shapes. And so let's get some stuff up here that we know. So we know the equation for an ellipse. Uh, kind of that general equation when the center is at 0, 0. And we know that the foci we could get by that. So there's our ellipse. Uh, we also know that basically um, hyperbolas are, are inside out ellipses. And it all looks the same, except there's some subtraction instead of addition going in there. And we know that a squared plus b squared it gives us. Right, this one going up down. Okay, so let's take these equations and mess around with them a little. So let's say I had something like, uh, I don't know, x squared over 9. We know that's going to be an ellipse. Center's at 0, 0. We've got an offset of 3 from the center because of that 9, 3 squared. And we've got an offset of 5 in the y direction um, because of that 25. Now what I want to do is I want to mess around with a little bit of this, this x and y. So notice what happens if I, uh, let me turn the picture off real quick. If I change this to a to an x minus three in here, notice what happens. My the whole thing shifts to the right three. It's like if this is time, everything's happening three clicks later in time. Um, and I could do the same sort of thing with y. I could say just a, a y plus one being squared. And notice that that shifts it down one. So my my center now is at three um, negative one. And the way I can think about where my center is, is what x value is going to make this a 0 if I plug it in? And what y value is going to make this a 0 if I plug it in? And my offsets are still the same. Like it still goes 3 from the center in both directions. And, uh, and then 5 from the center in both directions uh, for, in the y. So my offset's the same. This just shifts it. So notice that like instead of minus 3, this was like plus 3. Well, I was just going to shift it, shift my center to negative 1, negative 1. And the same thing would happen if this was a hyperbola. So I'm just going to copy it and change this into subtraction. Notice my center got moved. My center is actually here to uh, negative 3, negative 1. And then I'm offset of 3 in both um, three in both directions from there in the, in the x because of that 9. And then 5 from my box up to 4 and down to negative 6. There. So basically, that's how I can shift this around. And if I just, let's say I just make these variables. I'll just call them a and b just for, for my convenience. And uh, Oops, these should be minus those. And notice as I shift it around, if I change that a value, that x, it's going to move it left, right. The y is going to move the whole thing up, down. Now it's a funny motion looking at that up, down. It's, it's really shifting. It looks like it's kind of like doing a wave type thing, but the whole thing is just shifting. And the same thing would happen if I, if I had that with a, uh, with a, with a ellipse. That A value shifts it left, right. That B value shifts it up, right. So that's basically how I shift shift my conics. So now what I can do is I can expand on these a little bit. So in other words, I have some other parameters I'm going to throw in here, like x minus h squared and y minus k squared. And y minus k, k, is, k goes with y h goes with x, and if I do that over here. So what this means is, if I go to sketch this, my center is at the point h, k. Notice it's x minus h, y minus k. Um, and then, to get my box, I'm, I'm still offset of a in the x direction. So this distance is a. So that's just a shift in, in the x values. So that would make this point h plus a, okay, and make this one h minus a, 
K. And then a shift of, of B in the Y direction. And if I'm starting at K and I go up B, that would be H doesn't change because there's no left-right motion. But it'd be K plus B, and down that same amount would be K minus B. There's my box. And then I could place my foci. Um, and same thing with hyperbola, right? It's the same idea. I can, if I think about making this box, this rectangle off of it with HK with my center, identify my center, and then my offsets off the center, the rest is just graphing like, I, like we've been doing practice with graphing. So let's do, let's do a couple of examples now then. So I've got, um, you got that 25, that 36, x minus 7, y plus 8. So here's some things that I know. I know that the center of this is going to be at 7, negative 8. Again, think about plugging those back in. Plug in a 7, that makes this a 0. Plug in a negative 8, that makes this a 0. And that's not a point on the ellipse. This is an ellipse because it's plus. Um, but that is the, the center of it. Offset of 5 in the x direction. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this would be... 7 plus 5, because it shifted 5 in the x direction. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That would be the point 12, negative 8. The x component here is 7 minus 5, so that's 2, because um, that's 5 squared. This is 6 squared, so it's a shift of 6 in the y direction. So up 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this would be the point uh, 7. And then negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This would be the point 7. No left-right motion. But then if I go down 6 from negative 8, I think of it negative 14. I know it's an ellipse because it's plus. So I'll just kind of sketch my pieces in here. And then now, where are the foci? So I know that c squared is going to be the opposite operator. So 36 minus 25. Um, 36 minus 25 is 11, so c is the square root of 11. Square root of 11, that's 3 point something, right? 3 squared is 9. So 1, 2, 3, I'll just like estimate where I think it would be. 1, 2, 3, boom. And here's what's nice. If c is 11, that means that this distance right here, I'm sorry, square root of 11 is square root of 11. So my x value is 7, and I can just write my y value as negative 8 plus the square root of 11. And this would be 7, and then negative 8 minus the square root of 11. And there's my graph of, uh, of that one. Let's do another one. All right. Uh, I know that this is going to be a hyperbola from that subtraction right there. Um, I also know it's going to go up down because it's y squared minus x squared. What else do I know? I know my center. My center is at the point negative 8, 10. So that's good. So let me draw my box then. Offset of 3, 9 is 3 squared, in the y direction. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Offset of 4 in the x direction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Boop, boop. And this point right here then, I, I um, subtracted 3 from y. So this would be 10 minus 3 is 7. And here I added 3 to y, so that would be a 13. I'm going to get my asymptotes in here so I can sketch this reasonably accurately. All right, so where are the foci? So I know that um, c squared, these two compared with the opposite operator. So 16 plus 9, uh, the a squared plus b squared. So c squared is 25, so c must be 5. So that means my foci are 5 away, and hyperbola always wraps around the foci. So that means one of them is going to be up here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That would be then point negative 8, 15, right, because I'm adding 5 to that 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 8, 5. And there's my nice full sketch of that. All right, I want to do a couple more, um, couple more examples.
All right, I'm going to uh, sketch a graph of this. And it is a hyperbola, because I have the subtraction going on. And it's also um, going left, right, because it's x squared minus y squared. So I know my center is at negative 5, 9. Negative 5, 9. And look at, I have a 7 here. So 7 is the square root of 7 squared. So I'm just going to leave that x distance as square root of 7, knowing that that's 2 point something. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. So, so 2 point something. 2 point something. And if I go to label these, um, I could just say negative 5 plus square root of 7, 9. And this point would be but well, this is going to get crowded. I'll do it this way. Negative 5 plus the square root of 7, 9. And this point here would be um, negative 5 minus the square root of 7, 9. Uh, 5, so square root of 5 squared is that distance. That's a 2 point a little less, so something like that. So I draw my box, purple, and now let me find where the foci are. I know that it is uh, c squared is a squared plus b squared, because it's opposite of that. So 7 plus 5 is uh, 12. So c equals square root of 12, uh, which is, uh, what, 2 root 3? And square root of 12, that's a little more than 3, but less than 4. So 1, 2, 3, something like this. Remember the hyperbola will wrap around the foci. This was a shift in the x direction, so this I could say this is negative 5 plus 2 root 3, 9. And this one would be negative 5 minus, ah, sorry, negative 5 minus 2 root 3, 9. And there's a sketch of that. All right, this last one, I'm not going to actually sketch it, but I just want to do a little bit of analysis of it. If I had uh, this plus x minus 7 squared over 5 equals 1. So it feels like if I'm given this, this first term right here isn't over anything. But, but it actually is. It's over a 1. So that kind of solves that. So my offset in the x direction would be 1. My offset in the y, sorry about that, direction is root 5, 2 point something. Um, my center is at negative 5, 7. And then my c value is, this will be subtraction. So 5 minus 1 is 4. c squared is 4, so c would be 2. So my vertices, I'm sorry, my foci would be in the y direction by 2, off that center. All right, hey, give those problems a try. If you've been practicing your graphing, really there's, this isn't too big of a jump. Um, post any questions that you have or send them to me.